glow in the dark water sword. Mix up a batch of odor eating foot powder. Phew! Play a spooky tune on a screaming balloon. And do the static electric boogaloo. But first, it's time to wax up your surfboard. Because Kimberly and Jordan are about to teach us the secret of surfing. Far out! <laughs> Jordan's been dying to learn how to surf, and today's the day I'm going to teach him how. The waves look perfect for a beginner, so let's hit the water. Hey, let's paddle out. I'll start by showing him how I stand up. It's all in the art of balance. Your turn, Jordan. Oops, he's over. Try again. Oh dear. Again? Oh boy, I can see this is going to be more difficult than I thought. After lunch I'll show Jordan how to stay upright when the waves just want to tip you over. <laughs> Look what Ashley and I found in the attic. Mum says they're called records. You know, like old fashioned CDs. Look how big they are. We thought of a new use for these funny old things. We'll need a sharp pencil, Mum's cake decorating balls, and this woolen scarf. First I rub the record like crazy with the scarf. Lots of rubbing. Still rubbing. Ugh. Don't nod up, Ashley. Get ready with those icing balls. Okay, pour a few onto the record. Look, they're dancing. It must be a rock and roll record. Let's dance. Oh, they've stopped. Don't worry, watch this. They're dancing away from the pencil. It's the crazy icing ball boogie. Rubbing the woolen scarf on the record charged it up with static electricity. The positively charged icing balls are attracted to the negatively charged record. Because the charge is uneven across the surface of the record, the balls keep moving to where the charge is strongest. The static charge becomes weaker when the pencil is brought near because it partially earths that part of the record, taking away its negative charge. Now Ashley and I can't stop dancing. That static electricity has moved into us. Those girls have got some nice dance moves. I wonder if Kimberly could dance on a surfboard. Mm, I reckon she probably could. Let's head back to the beach and see what she's got planned for Jordan. After this morning's wipeouts, Jordan's a bit nervous about hitting the waves again. So surf school is in. First, we're going to make a mini surfboard out of this foam. Cool! I should be a surfboard designer. Lesson one for shaky surfers. A surfboard never sinks. And because it's flat, it doesn't tip over. Unless you help it. Even when surfer Cheryl climbs on board, it stays upright if she stays in the middle of the board. Kimberly's right. The surfboard floats because the force of buoyancy holds it up. Another force, the force of gravity, pulls down on the board. But when a surfer stands on the board, the centre of gravity shifts upward. And the further the centres of buoyancy and gravity are away from each other, the more likely the board is to tip over. OK, that's enough surf school. Time to hit the waves. It's a hot afternoon and the boys have been playing soccer for hours. Their sweaty feet are going to really stink up the house when they come home. Stinky boy feet. Yuck! Unless I can do something about it. Better get working on my solution before they finish playing. I'm going to make a special odour powder to sweeten their feet. 
I start with a big scoop of corn flour. That's the secret to stopping odours. Now I'll add some of this luster powder. It will give my mixture a nice shiny texture. Stir that in. Next, to really bring up the boy's feminine side, I'll add some pretty purple eyeshadow. And now my favourite, rose fragrance. A good mix. And then into this container. Those boys are going to smell beautiful. Oh no you don't. Stop right there you stinky soccer boys. Take off your shoes and socks please. We've got new rules about going to the house today. <gasps> Pew! Those feet really pull. You each get a good sprinkling of my new odour eating foot powder. There. Okay, in you go. You can walk, you know. Now that's a clever concoction. It works because the cornflour absorbs the moisture from the boy's sweaty feet. By ridding the skin of moisture, bacteria can't breathe. And bacteria are what make sweaty feet so smelly. Thank goodness for my magic foot powder. It's kept you two boys <laughs> smelling as sweet as a bunch of roses. <laughs> ah, it's nice to know boys can smell sweet. <laughs> Not Fraser though, he's too busy trying to freak people out. Time to give my ghost costume a workout. Goody Two Shoes Jane is in for the shock of her life. Woo! Oh, she thinks I'm a loser. Maybe my ghost outfit needs a little work. Creaky door, eh? That gives me an idea. Let's see. A balloon and a hexagonal shaped nut. Into the neck of the balloon it goes. Now I'll blow it up. Yep, the nut fell through as soon as the neck got wider. Tie it up. OK, if I hold the balloon like this and swirl it around... Cool! It makes a really creepy sound. It's the perfect accessory for a ghostly visit. As the nut hits the elastic walls of Fraser's balloon, they begin to vibrate. And because the inside of the balloon is a continuous surface, the vibrations interact with each other. This interaction is called resonance and creates the eerie noise of the nut in the balloon. Now to give Jade a real ghostly experience. Lights out and... for this ghostly apparition to disappear. <laughs> These two sworn enemies from the evil galaxy called Blog had decided to put an end to years of fighting with a uh, water fight. But not just any old water fight. No, a glow-in-the-dark water fight. First, the weapons. Two intergalactic water canisters with holes in their lids. Take yours, Voltar. Now poke a length of space hose through like this. Push about 10 centimetres through. Then fix it in place with some Pluto plasticine. This will stop the water spilling out through the hole. Next, attach a handheld laser to the bottom of the intergalactic water canister. Thanks, Volta. You may be evil, but you sure are handy with the space tape. Good. Now you're one. Time to fill them with that weird clear liquid from Earth. Water. Fill them right up. Then screw the lid on. That's a fully loaded glow-in-the-dark water weapon. I'll just finish mine. There. Now, evil Volta, are you ready to fight for the universe? Switch on your laser. Prepare for battle. And remember, there can be only one winner.
in a dead straight line. When the Todd beam hits the wall of the tube, it bounces off and continues down the hose in a zigzag pattern. This is known as constant internal refraction. Because of the special light refracting properties of water, the bouncing is much greater when the hose is full of water. Each time the light rays hit the inside of the tube, a small amount is not refracted. It passes out through the walls of the hose, creating the spectacular glowing effect. Okay, Volta, I'm going to send you around the world at the speed of light. Oh. It's just not a proper water fight till someone gets soaked. <laughs> Speaking of getting soaked, Kimberly and Jordan are about to hit the surf again. Jordan's ready to become a surfer boy. First, quick provision. Two bees of board riding. Buoyancy will keep you afloat. And when you stand up to catch a wave, all you have to do is balance. Keep your centre of gravity balanced in the middle of the pool. Don't worry, Jordan, I'll look after you. Now for the moment of truth. Go, Jordan! Keep your board as flat as possible. Now try to stand up. Keep your body in the middle of the board. Oh, dear. Wipe out. Surfers avoid the dreaded wipeout by adjusting the position of their centres of gravity as those big waves jerk their boards around under them. If the board moves to the right, surfers lean that way to balance their weight over the centre line of the board. If the board suddenly lurches to the left, they quickly shift their weight the other way. That way, the centre of gravity stays directly above the centre of buoyancy. Oh dear, I should have told Jordan there were really three Bs to board ride in. Buoyancy, balance and plain bad luck. Plenty of room for improvement there, but well done Jordan for having a go anyway. Well we have to go now too. See, See you next, next time. time.